every wireless technology needs a range of frequencies that it can operate in and that range of frequencies is called a frequency spectrum and 5G has been designed in such a flexible manner that it can operate primarily in three widely different frequency ranges or frequency bands or frequency spectra as they are alternatively called. The first of which are the frequency bands that are under 1 gigahertz also known as sub 1 uh, gigahertz frequencies. Example may include uh, traditional frequencies like 600, 700 or 800 megahertz. Uh, one benefit of operating in such low frequencies is that the range of the wireless signal is significantly better than what it would be in higher frequencies. That's how radio propagation works. Although the signal can travel farther because multiple services such as 5G, 4G, 3G, etc. would want to use those low frequencies, the availability of frequency spectrum in such low bands tends to be extremely limited. It is generally very difficult to get more than a few megahertz of continuous spectrum in such low frequency ranges. So if you have an application that requires let's say 100 megahertz of spectrum, what are your possible options? Well, 5G uh, provides the first option in the form of a frequency a band that is between 1 and 6 gigahertz also known as sub 6 uh, gigahertz. And the most prominent sub-6 gigahertz frequencies in which 5G is currently being deployed is uh, the band from 3.4 to 3.8 gigahertz. In such frequency bands, typically the frequency availability or channel bandwidth uh, offering tends to be slightly wider such as 100 megahertz for example. But what if you have an application that requires even more bandwidth such as 200, 400 or 500 megahertz of continuous bandwidth. For that, 5G allows a third uh, frequency spectrum that is known as millimeter wave. It is the frequency spectrum uh, above 24 gigahertz and it is called millimeter wave because at such high frequencies the signal wavelength is approximately on the order of a few millimeters and because your wavelength is a few millimeters that is why uh, these frequency bands are known as millimeter wave bands. Now 5G can be deployed in either sub 1 gigahertz band or sub 6 gigahertz band or in a millimeter wave band. The essence of 5G technology remains the same regardless of what band it is deployed in. Sure, there will uh, as always be some practical and implementation related specifics and differences uh, between how 5G operates in different bands. But at the heart of it, the core essence, the crux of uh, 5G technology remains the same regardless of what frequency band you are deploying in. And as you may have heard in the news lately, uh, the sub-6 gigahertz 5G and millimeter wave 5G are two prominent flavors of 5G that are getting a commercial traction. In North America especially, there is millimeter wave 5G that is getting slightly more attention and that is because of certain uh, undeniable benefits uh, that it provides. Those benefits are listed over here. The first benefit of deploying 5G in millimeter wave bands is that so far very few technologies had the capability or the need to utilize such high frequencies as millimeter wave. And as such, because there are very few services contending for the frequency in that spectrum, a uh, millimeter wave band is currently largely unused and as such ample spectrum uh, tends to be available in millimeter wave frequency bands. Spectrum on the order of 200, 400 or even 800 megahertz can be provisioned and uh, availed of with little difficulty in uh, millimeter wave frequency bands. So that is one fundamental benefit of deploying 5G in millimeter wave frequencies. Another benefit of uh, 5G millimeter wave has got something to do with radio propagation. Now as the operating frequency of a wireless signal increases, the size of the antenna that is required to process that signal begins to reduce. So they are inversely proportional. And what it means is that at significantly high frequencies such as millimeter wave, antenna size that is uh, necessary to operate in that frequency range is so small that 5G networks or cell phone towers can easily fit 100, 200 or even 500 antennas in a comparatively small uh, physical space. And that leads to a paradigm that is known as massive MIMO, which at a high level uh, entails many more antennas such as 100, 200 or 500 
than the legacy technologies uh, could uh, support in practical deployments. Now, once you have more antennas on the cell phone tower, the cell phone tower can transmit its signals with considerably higher gain as compared to before. And not only that, it can focus its transmitted signal precisely in the direction where the current user is located and thus uh, avoiding wastage in lateral directions. And because the cell phone tower can focus its transmitted energy only in the direction of interest where the user is precisely located, that leads to uh, improvement in a performance metric that is known as directivity of the signal. And higher gain and higher directivity ultimately lead to higher signaling efficiency and that is the second benefit of deploying 5G in millimeter wave bands. And these two advantages combined, that is enormous bandwidth availability and greater efficiency, these two directly result in higher uh, user capacity as well as network capacity and that is what ultimately positions 5G millimeter wave to fulfill the demands of uh, some of the upcoming data hungry use cases such as uh, cloud computing, data management, uh, virtual and augmented reality. So that is why 5G millimeter wave uh, gets as much attention in the media as you see it getting.